Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Make yourself feel at home. I'm Fashion Wizardry, aka Matilda, and I show you how to turn regular, regular thrift store items into beautiful pieces. So when I saw this shirt at the thrift store, I knew the potential was exponential, and I turned it into this stunning top. Ladies, bring me your man. I promise you I will transform him into an angel. Look at this top. I am so happy with how this turned out. My goodness, this project was so intimidating before I even got into it. But we'll talk more about that as we get through this DIY. So for now, I want you to seam rip off your pockets. Of course, this shirt had two pockets. Men's shirts get two pockets, whereas women's dresses can't even get one. What, are, what does a girl have to do around here to get a pocket so i just drew a straight line from under the armpit to the other side of the armpit you're just going to cut through that line once that was cut get rid of the top but keep her you will need her for later so the length of this piece is 17 inches in case you're making this from scratch you can work with 17 inches of fabric i am now unbuttoning the bottom bit and i am going to align the side seams just so that i can find my midpoint so there's my side seam i'm going to flatten things out take a piece of chalk and mark the midpoint at the front but this is the back of the shirt if that makes sense see that midpoint note her we're going to come back to her in a bit so moving on to the top of the shirt i hope you didn't burn it because we need to cut out interfacing i am marking out six by seven inches a rectangle and cutting that out so as i mentioned at the beginning this project was so intimidating before i started it in my head i built it out to be way more difficult than it turned out to be yes there are a lot of moving parts but yes you can do it so with that piece of interfacing i am just overlocking the edge using my sewing machine i just used an overlocking stitch on my sewing machine you could also use a serger if you have one so that's that and now you're going to fold that piece of fabric in half to find your midpoint mark it to the chalk you know the drill you can use whatever you need to mark this point but now you're going to put the right sides kissing and align those midpoints and once they're aligned you're going to pin the fabric in place that way she doesn't shush about and move about as you handle the business as you stand on business you want this fabric to stay put so i marked three and a quarter inches from the top and i'm using a ruler to draw a straight line again i wasn't raised to trust my instincts yes i'm in therapy working on that but for now i am going to draw the lines and i cut through that to create a v-shape kind of like a gap and you're now going to sew where i'm showing you using a straight stitch this is going to attach your interfacing to the top of your fabric so when you get to a corner once you've sewn your straight stitch just lift your presser fit shush the fabric put her down and continue sewing and you will do this all around that edge i showed you and once that's done here you go your fabric is attached we're going to snip off the corners and do tiny slits throughout the fabric Fabric to make it so that when you turn it on the right side it lays super flat so do your best have not as much seam allowance and you will be okay i also trimmed this middle bit because she was giving bulky and we needed her to give effortless so once this was done i am going to turn the fabric the right side out and i am going to poke out those corners using chopsticks because they were looking a little bit not too sharp for my liking i also ironed this down girl i committed to the the cause i was changing this shirt whether she liked it or not once it's ironed don't look on the inside too hard it's okay no one will see that so you see that natural bend where the interfacing joins everything you're going to bend that fabric and iron it down and we are now going to make a casing so at the base of my v-neck whatever you want to call it about one and a half inches from the top edge i am going to fold in the fabric and pin it in place as you can see the raw edge is not still Sticking out her traumas they will not make her react in a way that's not mature she's working on them in therapy so i pinned the entire top edge on both sides and once that was done we are going to sew a straight stitch along the base and this is only the beginning of the healing work for all the trauma <laughs> Why am I speaking about trauma so much? So I recently started therapy, restarted therapy, I will say, and I've had a lot of childhood issues come up that have been manifesting in my grown adult life. And I had to take charge and just say, it's my life and I can't keep regressing to these patterns and I'm working on changing them. So yes, as we sew this straight stitch, when I got to the bulky bits, I just made sure to slow down because sometimes healing is a long process. 
this. But you're going to sew your straight stitch if you're so confused because this is so chaotic. This is just who I am as a person. <laughs> so once that straight line was sewn, this is what she looked like. And now it's time to make a casing. We're now going to sew along the top and you will kind of have a casing. How easy was that? So look at the sunshine as this was happening, as I was sewing, I was sewing my element. Anyway, I sewed this straight stitch. Once she was sewn down, the casing is ready. You have now completed the first step. Look at her, she's gorgeous. By the way, my thread did not exactly match my project. And I used that as an excuse for a while before I started this project, but I was like, go for it. It doesn't matter that it's not an exact match. It doesn't matter that everything is not perfect. Sometimes you just need to get things done. So what I did there was I measured the length of my top. I had 57 and a half inches, but I decided 58 was a safe bet. And what I'm doing is I'm going to use the sleeve to create casings. We need casings for where the elastic will go. So I drew out one and a half inch pieces I think the yes the width was one and a half inches and I cut these pieces out randomly there's no method to the madness just do your best and what we're going to do is we're going to join these pieces right sides together at a right angle do not join these straight up because it will not look as nice and once the pieces were joined together at a right angle I'm going to pin besides the straight line that I just drew I drew the line as a guide just to help me sew because we're just going to sew along that straight line we drew and this is going to join the pieces together once I was being done at the sewing machine I was getting excited the project was not coming to her own she was coming into herself and I was so excited once the pieces have been joined together iron down your seam allowance and once you turn it that's it you are going to repeat this until you have the length you need for your top and to make this into a casing we're going to fold both edges in and iron them down we're making them commit to us because baby have you seen us <laughs> so you're going to repeat this all through yes you will be here for a very long time you need to do this three times babe I'm going to tell you to listen to a podcast I need you to watch a television show I don't care how you get it done but you need to get it done look at that length baby that casing is now ready to be utilized to her fullest potential so I'm now measuring the width of my breasticle it was seven and a half inches and you're going to go seven and a half inches from the very top don't go from the casing go from the very top and I'm going to mark this all throughout the length of my top just to have that as a guide I then drew a line and this line is going to be so useful in helping us navigate attaching the casing if you need to do this without the lines that's okay but I recommend doing the line because it makes life so much easier by the way we are doing this on the inside of your top do not do this on the outside so as you can see with the line it just makes life so easy why make it difficult when you are meant to live the soft life so to attach a casing I'm just attaching the top and the bottom using pins the folded edge once you've ironed everything it just makes it easier to attach it so as you can see it's just a seamless smooth process I am vibing I'm enjoying sewing again and so are you so once you've attached your casing I cut off the excess fabric I had a bit of excess and look at that your first casing is now pinned down ready to be sewn I did the second one off camera because it was taking a while girl I promise you it is worth it though once you see the end result you will be so happy you stuck it out the spacing between the casings by the way is an inch so this line I'm drawing is an inch from the edge of the last previous casing I hope that makes sense the distance between them is an inch each so yeah so what I'm doing now is I'm pinning the final casing and I'm just making sure there is no raw edge edge peaking coming to destroy the healing I'm making sure everyone is in their place they're respecting my boundaries I'm respecting theirs because that's how the world works baby so I pinned the top and the bottom you've seen me do this before and once I was done the three casings are attached of course get rid of the fabric the excess she is not needed anymore her job here was done so once the casings are attached to your top you're going to fix the front pins so I'm going to go an inch from the button plastic 
bracket and sew from there. So don't sew from the very edge because we want to keep the casings open. That way we can insert our elastic later on. So those pins, I am showing you those pins and that is the amount you will leave. So you will stop sewing at these points. Don't close anything off, okay? So you will be here for a while because you're sewing both the bottom and the top of your fabric. So while we're here, I wanted to mention that this project took me five afternoons to finish. So in case it's a project that's intimidating you a little bit, I promise you, just take your time. There's no timeline. Do it at your own time. Do it when you enjoy it. Do it when you feel like it. It's okay. I feel like social media has made it so that we have to create art and it has to be out there all the time for you to be an artist or like a creator. But I promise you, your own pace, that is absolutely perfect. Anyway, I am now going to place a pin at the top of my casings, the top casing, and that is because I learned that the casing was closed and I needed her open girl because we need to be able to insert the elastic. So I seam ripped it open. This is very easy to do. The pin was there to make sure I didn't get too happy with seam ripping. I knew when to stop. And once that was done, we have openings at the top of our top. No pun intended. <laughs> so once that's done, I'm going to turn the top the right side out and I'm going to join the right sides kissing because it's time to shut it down. The finish line is in sight. You've come this far. You can definitely see this project through. So what I'm doing is I'm pinning the two sides together and I'm doing that beside the bottom placket as you can see. I also decided to pin the casings away from the edge. I did not want to sew them shut by mistake because that would be a whole other problem. So I pinned each and every casing out of the way and continued to pin the two pieces together. And you can see that I'm pinning on the inside of the bottom placket. We're going to get rid of that entire bottom placket. She has done her job. She served us. We don't need her anymore. So I'm just going to sew along the pins. I'm just using a straight stitch. And once that was done, I am going to get rid of the excessive bottom placket. She does not need to be here no more. Just like all that childhood trauma. <laughs> anyway, I'm now going to overlock that raw edge just to make sure the fabric doesn't fray on me. Use your serger or your overlocking stitch on your sewing machine. And once you've overlocked everything, you are now going to sew your casing shut. That way you have a casing. So I am going to make sure that raw edge is tucked in and do a straight stitch at the bottom and the top. So this is what the top looks like. Yes, she is not perfect, but it is honest work. So the stitching, there she is. And I was very happy with this. I am now going to show you how to turn these raw edges into casings. So I got rid of the pins. And once I was done, I cut off the excess on one side. And then with the other edge, I just folded in that raw edge and placed it on top of the other side. So once you sew a straight stitch along the top, it's going to become a casing. So pin along the top so that you know where to sew. And I did this for the three casings and I'm only going to sew along the top. Don't sew along the bottom yet. You don't need to jump ahead of yourself. Just stay with me. So I sewed a straight stitch along that edge I'd pinned. And once I was done, this is what that looks like. And your casing is now kind of ready. So you're going to measure elastic. And I did one right underneath my boobs, one right at my waist, my natural waist, and one at my low waist. And now you have three pieces of elastic ready to be attached to your top. So to feed in your elastics, you're going to attach safety pins to both ends. One of my safety pin was much smaller because she needed to be able to navigate this casing. Girl, this was not easy to do. That pin was barely hanging on by a thread. So I had to have patience and Jesus as I navigated this. I took my time. I was definitely here for a while. But once the elastic came out the other side, the battle is finished. You just have to do this two more times. So I got rid of the safety pins once the elastic ends came out. And I'm going to place the elastic ends on top of each other. So a zigzag stitch to join them together. And once that was done, you're going to close your casing and sew a straight stitch along the bottom edge. You're going to repeat this two more times. I know, girl, you're almost there. You're almost there. So this is what the sewn edges look like. And once I'd done this three times, the elastics at the base were attached. It's now time to deal with the final boss, the mother elastic, the one that goes at the top. She is not unconquerable. We will do it. So I am going to measure a piece of elastic around my upper bust area, and I'm going to attach safety pins to both ends of the elastic. You know the drill. You've been here a couple of days. We can do this together. And I used my safety pin to guide the elastic through that 
that casing. So for this casing, I know it's going to push back, but you're going to push back even more because you are a warrior. You've come this far. Nothing is going to get in your way, okay? So once the safety pin came out the other end, I'm going to pull out that elastic. And I was trying to shush this fabric around, but I decided the smaller safety pin had to go and I had to bring in the big dogs. So I attached a bigger safety pin to that end and I'm now going to shush out my elastic to just distribute it evenly within my casing and she needs to disappear. She needs to go. So what we're going to do with the top elastic is we're going to fake a string is coming out of the ends. To do this, I'm going to use the remaining sleeve and draw out one and a half inches by 13 inches long and I cut out two strips of fabric. Turning them the right side in, I am going to put the right sides kissing and sew along that edge with a seam allowance as close as possible as I can get to making this as thin as possible but still being able to turn this the right way out. I hope that makes sense. So this is a stitch. I think I used half an inch of seam allowance. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But I got rid of the excess seam allowance to make turning this strap the right way out very easy. So I'm going to have two strips of fabric and I'm going to use my loop turner. We are reunited after a year and I'm going to use this to turn the strips of fabric the right way out. You basically pinch a bit of fabric at the end and use that fabric to turn the strap on itself so that the right side comes out. So once that was done, I'm going to shush out the fabric so that the raw edge and the inside is tucked away forever. And there you go. Once you repeat that, you will have two straps. I ironed them down just to make it look a little bit more professional, but you know, it doesn't have to look immaculate. And to attach these to your elastic ends, you're going to make sure the elastic goes on the inside. And I pinned that to the edge of my strap and I'm going to sew a zigzag stitch to attach the end of the elastic to my strip of fabric. So I pinned both edges and once everything was sewn, this is what she looked like. And I used a bodkin to push that elastic edge in. That way you wouldn't see that black elastic anymore. And once that was done, I made sure to snip the strap Traps at the end. I was trying to go for a diagonal look, make it look cute and quirky. I tied a little bow and at the edges of each strap, I tied a knot just to ensure that raw edge would not unravel on me when I threw this in the wash. So once that's done, you are done with your project. Look at her, girl. We did it. Seeing this final project, I am so glad I did not let that initial hesitation stop me from doing this project because seeing this final final piece is such a rewarding feeling and I know you will feel the same if you embark on this project. So I really hope you do try this for yourself. Let me know how it goes in case you do. It's been so fun sewing together. I hope you had a good time because I know I sure did. I will be enjoying this top. Yes, summer is over, but girl, let me enjoy this. I will wear this around the house or throw a big coat over it and rock it in the fall. And the best part is I can wear this for next summer. So if if you start this DIY now, you will have a top ready for next summer. And what's not to love about that? Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.